Hi guys, I'm Phoebe and welcome back to my channel. As someone who's been using Goodnotes for more than two years, I've noticed that many YouTube videos focus too much on describing the aesthetic presentations and numerous functions of this app. While these videos may look reassuring and fancy, they're just too overwhelming for a busy and tired university student like me who need a note-taking product for saving time and making my uni life easier. In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to take notes using good notes in three different scenarios that you'll frequently encounter in university. I've been using good notes for many years and these methods have proven effective to me. Also, I'll share with you some functions that are particularly useful when learning a difficult subject. Let's get started. The first scenario occurs when you are provided with PowerPoint slides that contain loads of information already. In university, professors usually upload PowerPoint slides with tens or hundreds of pages right before the class. It can be cumbersome to print out all the pages and it can be redundant to write down all the information in an extra notebook. With Good Notes, you can directly download and annotate these slides by highlighting key information and adding additional notes. If the professor talks about a particular slide a lot, you can easily add a new slide of the current template without worrying about space to write. Additionally, after class, if you need to find a specific point the professor mentioned, you can use the search function of the app by typing the word in the search box to find all the pages containing that word, whether it's in text or in your handwriting. The second scenario is when you receive a document containing limited information and you need to write down a lot of extra notes by yourself. This often happens in my math classes, where my professor often provides a 10-page PDF file containing only definitions and a theorems, and I need to write down the proofs of the theorems and extra examples of these topics by myself. In this scenario, the screenshot function in GoodNotes is particularly useful. You can add a new page, take a screenshot of a theorem, paste it onto the new page, and then write the proof or examples for the theorem the professor mentioned in class. Similarly, you can paste the difficult practice questions from tutorials or reference book into the lecture notes by taking screenshots, which makes revision easier. Furthermore, in class, if you find yourself unable to follow the professor's explanation of a specific theorem, you can take a screenshot of the blackboard and paste it into your notes. Alternatively, you can use the recording function to capture what the professor is saying on the topic. Later, after class, you can take notes based on the screenshot or recording, and then delete the media file. The third scenario is when making a summary or revision notes. Here, I recommend two templates, Cornell and Squared Paper. The Cornell template is suitable for creating revision notes that involve multiple key terms and many explanations or additional information related to the key terms. You can write the title, which is the main topic, at the top of each page, and then write the key terms or concepts in the left column of each page. Next to each keyword, you can provide its definition and relevant explanations or examples if necessary. While reviewing the notes, you can refer to the key terms on the left column to recall the term's definition or explanation and ensure that you remember them correctly. You can also quickly find all the information related to a term when you encounter questions on the keyword in an assignment. On the other hand, the squared paper template is more useful when creating cheat sheet style notes that enable personalization of revision material. Here is an example of making a summary of French grammar on tenses. To personalize my notes, I can construct a timeline that covers the different tenses I have learned, accompanied by concise summaries. Different colors are applied to make the presentation clear, and the square paper format allows me to put key points within distinct blocks to facilitate easy comprehension. Apart from the above three scenarios, I'm going to share with you two methods that are particularly useful when you find a subject 
difficult. First, use additional resources to enhance your understanding. Professors usually base their courses on a specific reference book. While you are unsure about a concept or you want to find more exercises related to a concept, you can refer to the reference book regularly. You can download a reference book from an online website and open it via GoodNotes. Then you can use the split view function to view the supplementary learning materials and your notes at the same time. By typing the keyword in the search box, you can quickly locate the topic you want to learn more about in the book. You can copy a screenshot of a clear graph, a screenshot of a use for exercise, or even a well-explained page from the reference book and paste them into your own notes. So you won't feel confused about a difficult topic during the revision process. Second, record your professor's explanations. If your professor explains things clearly and make tests incoherent with their explanation, it's important for you to understand their explanation and make sure there are no misunderstandings. When the class recording is provided, you can click on the microphone icon on the GoodNotes page to record their explanation of a term or theory while taking notes. This allows you to listen to the recorded sound of a specific sentence you wrote without the need to go through the entire recording. If your professor explains things clearly and makes tests incoherent with their explanation, these are the methods and functions I personally found useful when using this app. While there is still room for improvement of this app, such as the inaccurate automatic conversion of mathematical equations and annoying scribbling to erase on overlapped items, etc. I hope my tips today will help you take better notes. And if you like my video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.